Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is going to be my entry into the one and only Brad H2 Vinyl, his 350 subscribers contest. Um, yeah, I had to jump on board and do this one. I actually had it saved in my favorites and just completely forgot to go back and do an entry. So Brad, I'm glad you put up the reminder video the other day to uh, remind my butt to get over here and make sure to do a response to your your video and pay my respects to your channel. Uh, you know, Brad is an awesome guy. I mean, just really knowledgeable about music, which, you know, like so many people here in the VCR, seems like I'm saying that about everybody these days. But uh, yeah, just so knowledgeable about music, just kind of real down to earth guy. And, uh, and it's cool because the music that he likes, like he really seems to know it, you know. So even when he's talking about it in his videos, uh, he can get very in depth with painting pictures and kind of letting you know what to expect out of an album and stuff like that and it's been really cool because i've discovered a lot of new music through watching this channel so yeah brad man congratulations and glad to jump on board and do a response so let's just kind of jump right into it uh, i have the questions pulled up over there uh share three albums celebrating narration in your music collection so like three albums where someone you know inside the album is like talking or narrating or a clip from some play you know blah 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 so the three that I picked started out with this album here, which is Def Leppard Hysteria. And I'm going with the intro to um, uh, is it Rocket? I'm getting confused now. I'm confused. I think it's Rocket. <laughs> uh, where the intro, which is kind of like a it's not even really, you can't understand words. It just sounds like they're making weird noises. But what it actually is, is um, we're fighting with the gods of war played backwards and that's what that intro is that they're kind of saying slash chanting there towards the beginning of that song um so i think a lot of people know that maybe some don't but you know i thought that was kind of a neat one to to play off of narration uh let's see the next one we're going here with ll cool j bad some old school hip hop right there. I mean, you gotta love that one. And um, there's actually two different places in the song, but I'm really talking about the very beginning of this song. Because when you talk about kind of a spoken type of narration, the song kicks in with like a guy making a call over a police scanner. I mean, for those that aren't familiar with the song. <clears throat> so it starts off and he's like, calling all cars, calling all cars. Be on the lookout for a tall, light skinned brother with dimples, wearing a black Kango gold or sweatsuit, gold chain, and sneakers. Last seen headed east on farm, or last seen headed on Farmers Boulevard in the East. Elias LL Cool J, he's bad. <laughs> and then LL kicks in doing his thing. One of LL's best tracks ever, quite frankly. But uh, yeah, that's 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 a pretty cool. <laughs> All right, next, uh, oh, the third one for that same. Same question. This is what I came up with, which is bad brains. And this one's kind of maybe harder to describe without a needle drop, but it's the song "Popcorn" off of off of this album. Uh, this came out in what 2012. Um, I mean, and I don't know. I've, I've spoken about bad brains a number of times in you know throughout my years in the VC, and just an, an awesome freaking killer group. Especially when you talk about guys that are just just skilled i mean it's really like not a just musically skilled i mean between all their albums as again you've probably heard me say over the years you know you can pull out an album and you don't know if you're gonna get like straight hardcore punk you don't know if you're gonna get straight reggae you don't know if you're gonna get more or less straight metal i mean they, they can bring it any way it just it just depends on what's flowing through them when they decide to cut a record is really what it boils down to and uh, Popcorn is another really great, great example of just kind of some of their creativity. But inside of it, there, there's two different parts where he kind of goes into this piece. And again, it's hard to do without a needle drop. But he, he, he just starts asking these questions. You know, it was basically like, so, so how many girls do you know that come from Northeast Rasta? How many girls do you know that comes from Southeast Rasta? And there's another part where he goes into how many girls do you know that come from L.A. Rasta? And, and it's just like he's, he's speaking those parts throughout the middle of the song so just go take a listen to it uh, again bad brains popcorn it's a really cool track and then you'll understand the parts i'm talking about but 
that was one of the very first ones that came to mind when um when I when I saw that question. And I will show this too because you guys know I'm usually not a big fan of colored vinyl and all that that kind of stuff. It's just I just don't like it. I prefer black. But this was actually one I kind of liked. And maybe it's because it fits bad brains so well. So I just wanted to show this really quick. This is a clear vinyl with just kind of some different color specs in there. And again, I usually don't like this kind of stuff, but for whatever reason, I actually really, really dug this when I first saw it. So that was something else that was very unique. They made me like colored vinyl. Um, I guess you can consider that color vinyl. But anyway, move right along. Question number two, share five albums you haven't shared uh, or have ever shared. It's been a long time since you shared with the VC. So, and I think that with the way, Brad, with the way you answered it, I think you kind of threw a caveat in there about maybe band, a band you felt like you should talk about a little bit more or hadn't spoken about enough. So I pulled out one kind of under that category. Then the others were just, the other five really were just, um, geez, maybe I pulled out more than I thought. I think I pulled out six, I'm sorry. <laughs> but they were just albums that I just haven't shown, period, in a long time. And I, so... But the one band that came to mind that I felt like maybe I, I haven't t spoken about enough, maybe that deserves more attention as far as I'm concerned, is this one right here, which is Cameo. Uh, just doesn't seem like there's a lot of people in the VC that dig, I should say that dig, but that talk about and show a lot of the 80s R&B. Uh, that and kind of soft rock just tends to, you know, tends to get pushed to the side a bit. There's a few more people kind of talking about country and stuff now, especially since Billy Hurst has kind of been on the scene. I've kind of noticed he's inspired a few a few people to, you know, start digging the country stuff a little more. But yeah, the 80s R&B is one area I feel that really gets left out quite a bit. But Cameo is one of the greatest bands from that era. I mean, they were actually kind of late 70s going all the way through the 80s. And most people tend to know them, you know, with their bigger stuff like Word Up and and that type of stuff. Because that was definitely big and more mainstream, but they I mean, say so they go they go way back and they have just a lot of just great stuff. Just a great band that doesn't quite get the credit it deserves overall. And what really made them so great is they're a little bit like Bad Brains, where they don't stick to any particular mold. Like they just do whatever they kind of want to do, whatever they hear, whatever they feel. That's what they lay down. And I've always described them as uh, R&B's most rock and roll band. It's kind of right there with Parliament, Funkadelic, and all that. But yeah, like um, R&B's most rock and roll band. Because what they do really does take on kind of a, you know, let's break the rules, rock and roll type attitude. Uh, with, you know, Blackmore being the lead, lead singer there. But yeah, fantastic band. Um, you know, and here you have... Songs like uh, Cameosis, Shake Your Pants. This is from 1980. Again, they started back in the 70s. Um, but then when you go further into the early and mid 80s, which is kind of my favorite time period in them, you know, you start getting into stuff like um, Alligator Woman, uh, Single Life, uh, Candy, uh, you know, just like just, just fantastic tracks. She's Strange, another great one. So, yeah, definitely a band I, I don't talk about enough, I think. It's just fantastic. Now, albums that I haven't shown, you know, at least the ones that came to mind, I just haven't shown or talked about in a long, long time, but are really great albums. That's kind of another key to it as well. Uh, ACDC, uh, Iron Man 2 soundtrack. This is one I haven't really spoke about that much. It's actually got a really nice sealed copy, which is cool. I never, never got around to opening this, which is nice. But um, yeah, it's basically just another greatest hits. It reminded me a lot of what they did with uh, Maximum Overdrive with Who Made Who. You know, just kind of turned into somewhat of a ACDC's greatest hits kind of thing. And the Iron Man 2 kind of did the same thing. I mean, on here you have everything from Shoot the Thrill, Rock and Roll Damnation, uh, Back in Black, Thunderstruck, um, Hell Ain't a Bad Place to Be, The Razor's Edge, Let There Be Rock, Highway to Hell, and a few other, I mean, a number of other songs too. So that's basically what it ended up being, which is kind of a, another greatest hits that made the soundtrack. But very, very cool. 
And again, I haven't shown that album. I don't think I've spoken about it in a long time. Uh, same thing with this one. Wallflowers. Who, uh, what's his name? Um, is it Dylan Sun? Lead singer of the Wallflowers. Um, and it really is a, a decent record. It's definitely a pleasant listening kind of album. Uh, you know, One Headlight was definitely the kind of the big hit off of this. But then you also had um, Fifth Avenue Heart... No. Um, Sixth Avenue Heartbreak. I knew it didn't sound right. Um, I was one block away from the heartache. Um, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, so another really good album. You know, I, I really... I shouldn't say I really got into them. I mean, I, I kind of dug their hits back when they came out in the 90s and just always kind of liked them, you know? And just a great album. I was very glad when they put it out on vinyl. It's just one I haven't shown or pulled out of the stacks in quite some time. So that's one that makes the list. Next one I'm going to go to here. This is one I definitely need to pull out a lot more often. This is Rap's Greatest Hits. Arguably, yeah, arguably... I always say one of the top three albums in my rap and hip hop collection right here. Not based on value, just talking about music. Is that baby right there? Because on here you have everything from, I mean, you have Rumors by the Timex Social Club, which is cool. But then you go into The King of Rock by Run DMC, a classic. A Fly Girl by the Boogie Boys. I mean, you're starting to go now back into the early, early cool days of hip hop. Uh, Howie's Teed Off by The Real Roxanne, Fat Boy's self-titled The Show by Dougie Fresh, which in my mind is probably the one of the ultimate songs where if you had aliens that came down from outer space somewhere and they were like, we got these radio messages we were picking up. It was like saying something about this thing called hip hop. Like, what exactly is hip hop? Well, what is that? You hand them The Show by Dougie Fresh and uh, the Get Fresh crew and they'll get a perfect understanding of what hip hop is about. Um, Pee Wee's Dance by Joski Love. <laughs> Another just great classic. Friends by Houdini. Roxanne, Roxanne by UTFO. Uh, the Roof is on Fire by Rockmaster Scott and the Dynamic 3. That is a solid uh, hip-hop album for you right there. All the old school classics on that one. So very solid album. I just I have not pulled out and talked about, shown, or even spun in quite some time. So you know that was going to be getting a spin in the next day or two. Going back to the 80s, 80s R&B kind of getting some love. Uh, again, not talking about enough in my my opinion. This is New Edition's Greatest Hits. Fantastic album there. I'm sure most of you probably know New Edition, but for those that don't, just kind of a little quick review. I mean, just the one of the early all-boy R&B bands coming out in the early 80s. Um... You know, they had, that's where Bobby Brown, you know, first started. Belle Bib DeVoe, obviously those three came from New Edition. Johnny Gill eventually came into to New Edition and left. So, uh, you know, some big names that kind of went out and started doing their own thing. Ralph Tra Transvat, I can never say his last name right. Uh, you know, he eventually left as the lead singer and started doing his own solo career. So there were a lot of decent-sized careers that, that kind of came through New Edition. Uh, Bobby Brown probably being the biggest from a solo perspective. Well, I guess Bell, 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 they were pretty big too in the, the early 90s. But anyway, after running through that rambling quick history, this is just a great piece with the uh, kind of their greatest hits across the board. So you have everything from their very early days, such as Candy Girl and Popcorn Love. Candy Girl's my jam off of there. Um, Candy Girl, Popcorn Love, uh, Is This the End? I mean, you can tell they're just really young and those very, very high young voices and all that kind of stuff, especially Ralph. His voice kind of naturally high anyway. But then you also go into some of their later stuff when they were a little more, you know, when they were kind of becoming men, so to speak. And you have stuff like If It Isn't Love, great dance track in my opinion. Can You Stand the Rain, that's when Johnny Gill came on board, just a smooth R&B groove. A uh, little bit of love is all it takes, just... I mean, a lot of their greatest hits, just a fantastic album. Great 80s, early to mid 80s R&B stuff there. Uh, and then the last two, again, just stuff I haven't shown, pulled out, or talked about in a long time. Coldplay, this is Parachutes. This is from 2000, 
Actually, so it goes back a little ways. But yeah, again, the first album that brought me to them, I think this, this was their debut album. But um, yeah, I have not spun this or pulled this out in quite some time. And it, it definitely is an album that I, I love. I mean, I, I do like Coldplay as much as people like to make a joke about them, you know, so to speak. But, you know, Yellow, of course, was the big hit off of here. But arguably my favorite song off of this is Don't Panic. I think that's probably my favorite track off of this album. But uh, yeah, this is what brought Coldplay onto the scene and definitely an album I haven't shown in, in quite some time. And last but not least, a little Usher. I know I haven't pulled this out in a long time. <laughs> but this is 8701. And again, you guys you know this album pretty well. Very cool piece too. I mean, it's a nice gold stamp promo. Um, you know, this had uh, you remind me, and um, what was the other big hit off? Or you got it bad. A few other things too. So just a really cool album that again I haven't shown and pulled out in the VC in quite some time, long, long time actually. So those are my picks for uh, five albums that I just haven't shared, or maybe now there might be one or two in here that I've never shown in the VC. So those are my picks there. Last question was to share at least one artist or group that you love, but you just don't have any items in your collection. Uh, that was kind of a tough one too. And at first when I read that, I was thinking, you know, you don't have on CD or you don't have on vinyl, or, or you, you don't, you may have on CD, but may, don't have on vinyl. But then I also kind of got the impression you were saying like no vinyl, no CD or anything. But anyway, so what I ended up picking, there were three that came to mind. Um, Poor Righteous Teachers, definitely love them, uh, especially when you go back to, you know, tracks like um, like Rock This Funky Joint and stuff like that. I mean, the, the, that stuff is slamming. You talk about, again, just kind of hip hop going down one of its pure phases there. And I don't have any of their stuff in in, in my collection. So that that's definitely uh, some stuff I would love to get. Uh, King Diamond. Another great one. Now, I do have a King Diamond, like, little mini LP box set. You know, it has some studio albums there, but I do not have a single King Diamond album on vinyl. And, uh, you know, King Diamond is the man. <laughs> what can you say? So I would love to get some King Diamond vinyl in my collection. And then last but not least, I decided to go with uh, Bill Dixon, which is another one, another great jazz artist. Uh, I'm not going to say free jazz, but... Definitely some of his stuff can be kind of, you know, avant-garde type of stuff. Uh, but it's really kind of cool. It's just another one of those noisemakers, but keeps it more simple and plain. It's not like a whole gigantic band. Like, it's not like a Sunra, Strange Strings type of, type of noise, if you will. It's really kind of more of an isolation type of thing, but best way to kind of describe it but yeah I, I love a lot of bill dixon stuff and he has a, a number of albums i don't have any of his stuff on vinyl at all either so i would love to get you know get some of that as well so there you go man those are my little picks <laughs> if you will uh again congratulations on the 350 subs if you have not jumped on board his contest make sure i'll try to remember to go and put a link in below uh, make sure you go over, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching, VC, and we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.